The NAPT is back. And so are the bounties. Ha <laughs> ha, eat some of this. This brand new format created quite a shootout in the desert. Yes, and now the high rollers have come east. One time for the kid. Each with a price on their head. Bounty, bounty, come get some of this. Each gunning for $350,000 in this winner-take-all event. Always do or die. Second place? Uh-uh, that's worth nothing. The PokerStars.net NAPT Bounty Shootout starts now. Phil Connecticut and Mohegan Sun. This fantastic destination sets the backdrop for this incredible tournament on the second stop of the PokerStars.net North American Poker Tour. I'm Lon McCarron with Norman Chad, and this bounty shootout field of 35 is filled with a lot of familiar faces who paid $25,000 each for their seat. Out in the field is 04 world champ Greg Raymer, who still has a house in this area. Seasoned pros like Barry Greenstein and Chow Zhang. Young sensations like EPT champion Jason Mercier. The freshly minted NAPT Venetian Main Event Champion Tom Marchese and the reigning NAPT High Roller Bounty Shootout Champion Ashton Griffin. Most of those who finish behind Griffin are here, including Hoyt Corkins, the runner-up in that event, and Scott Seaver, who earned the title The Bounty Hunter, taking down eight bounties. Lucky, lucky. And at our featured table is a man searching for his first bounty in this event, Daniel Negreanu. He owns four World Series bracelets, but would love to get his hands on more of those $5,000 bounty chips. Each player starts with one, but get knocked out, you have to hand it over. I just want to be the first one out. Remember? Yeah, last time Daniel was the first off his shootout table. If I fold every hand, I'll guarantee that I don't. I think almost for sure somebody will go broke for me. If I were playing, he'd be assured not to be the first one out. When he does play, he'll have two formidable players to his left. For us, Jocko, who finished fifth at the Venetian Bounty Shootout. And there is Sorel Mitzi, an online monster who's morphing into a live monster. In addition to the winner-take-all prize of $350,000, they'll also win that trophy. Action underway. The blinds at 100-200 with a 25-chip ante. Daniel looks down at King Jack. Raise. Raise it up. I'm going to raise for us, Jaka Jaka. And Sorel Mitzi Mitzi. <laughs> <laughs> Mitzi Mitzi doesn't sound nearly as cool as Jaka Jaka. <laughs> right? <laughs> Mitzi Mitzi spider. <laughs> 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 Daniel might want to consider adding some meat to his diet. <laughs> <laughs> Under the gun, Daniel raises to 600. A 24-year-old Faraz Jaka from Chicago, but he lived out of a suitcase for a couple of years. Jack Seven of Hearts, he lays it down. Sorrel Mitzi, like Daniel from Toronto, he is currently living out of a suitcase following the poker tour. He'll lay it down. I lived in a suitcase in 1997. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone started. Started with 25,000 chips folded to Brian Lemke from Norristown, Pennsylvania with Ace Deuce of Diamonds. Lemke won a World Series bracelet in 2009. He finished fifth at the USPC Championship the same year, and he makes the call. He'll go heads up with Daniel. Here's the flop. Queen 4-8. Lemke's ace high is best. Negrano looks a little more comfortable with that flop than Lemke does, but neither one got a piece of it. Lemke checks. Daniel missed with his king jack, and he'll check turn card now. Is a king. Daniel pairs his king. Lemke, though, picks up a flush draw. Daniel looking at Lemke and Lemke looks guilty of something. <laughs> He's going to bet his draw. 800. Lemke with the semi-bluff. Negrano with a quizzical face. Daniel commits 800 with top pair. And a big gulp. He doesn't look too comfortable. River card, 10 of clubs, no flush for Lemke. You see by the 100% mark next to Daniel's name, he's got the best hand. Ah, blue. Lemke bets 1,000. I didn't want you to bet at all. I was hoping you'd just check. I'm taking it. Daniel didn't like that bet. You would bet 1,000 with exactly King Jack, right? Or Ace Deuce. If you had Kings and Queens, you'd want to take more from me. You'd want more, <laughs> more money. No, you, you're not betting that small with two pair, I don't think. What do you guys think? <laughs> Please don't answer Obviously, that. Daniel's joking. It's one man uh, per this hand. This is so weird. I think we have the same hand. You have a king jack. I have a king jack. Let's hopefully split it. Ace high. What? Oh, I can beat that. Daniel makes the call, and he will take that pot. He almost talked himself out of it. Those are one. That's one of those spots I'm so happy to be wrong. <laughs> I'm always happy to be wrong. I really have no choice. Daniel's read a little off, but he'll take that pot, but he knows it will take more than winning small pots to advance. 
This is a shootout. The goal, beat the table. Players are spread out over six tables. Win yours, and you'll pocket up to $60,000 and advance to the final table. And this tournament has a twist. The bounty. For each person you knock out, you win $5,000. Collect the most bounties and win a seat to the next NAPT bounty shootout. And, of course, this is winner take all $350,000 to the last man standing. Two men who won the most at the inaugural shootout event are in this field today at Table 1 NAPT. Venetian shootout champ Ashton Griffin, he earned a half a million dollars there. Seated next to the man dubbed the bounty hunter, Scott Seaver, who took eight bounties at the Venetian event. At their table, Chow Zhang and Matt Glantz doing battle. Zhang with a spade flush draw and a straight draw, while Glantz has a diamond flush draw, and he just bet 2500 the turn was a big card for Chow Zhang. Zhang with his two draws and leading with ace high raises to 5,200. A lot of chips going in. Neither player with a made hand. Matt Glantz goes all in. And then throws in his bounty chip to chip Chow Zhang. <laughs> it's like a shootout at the OK Corral. Some crooked shooters, though. Well, the bounty makes for faster play in this event. The $5,000 certainly adds some equity. Oh, I don't care. Zhang makes like the call. You don't need to put your 5,000. And this river card will oh be big. God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Chow pretty excited that he's ahead. A lot of gamble here. One time. Give him a win one time. Glance needs a queen, jack, or diamond, or he's the first bounty casualty at this table. River card is a nine of diamonds. Glance hits the flush to take that big pot. Chow Zhang is crushed. Matt Glantz is resuscitated. Glantz, the chip leader at this table with almost 47,000. Chow Zhang, the short oh, stack at under 2,000. I had a quick play of poker turn, man. I cannot win. <laughs> Over at table two, Chow's big game buddy, Barry Greenstein. Of course, if he were to be knocked out today, the person who does it will get a bounty and a signed copy of his book. Barry seated next to 04 champion Fossil Man, Greg Raymer, who took a page out of Barry's book and now gives away a signed Fossil every time he's knocked out. They're watching as the runner-up of the NAPT Venetian main event, Sam Stein, joust with Brian Powell. The 28-year-old Powell from Kentucky holds two aces. Stein flopped a pair of queens and checked. Powell bet 2,900. And now Stein check raises to 7,150. This guy looks like an actor who won't talk to me. And I don't recognize Sam Stein without his mother. <laughs> Powell makes a call for 4,250. Over 17,000 in the pot. Turn card is a two of hearts. Powell still best. Powell finished 66th at the 2009 World Series main event. Stein with a 9% hand moves all in and gets an immediate call from Powell. And Sam Stein in trouble. As we've seen him in previous events, he's going to need a so non-heart king or queen or he's gone. The river card now is a king. And Stein Rivers, two pair to crack Powell's aces. I thought Sam Stein's mom was his lucky charm. Feels like such a cool guy. He apparently just carries his own. After that bad beat, Powell busted down to under 6,000, while Stein on the uptick now over 41,000. At table six, the man that Stein lost to for the NAPT Venetian Made Event Championship, Tom Marchese, is all in with Ace King and a draw, and he's running to aces held by Poker Pro Luis Vasquez. The last time we saw him, Marchese looked like a champion. Now he just looks like a 22-year-old about to lose. He needs a queen. It is a tray of hearts on the river. The pocket aces hold up. Vasquez takes out Tom Marchese. So Vasquez is $5,000 richer with that bounty chip. He's the leader at that table with over $50,000. let us get back to our featured table. Who's the first one out? Who's the first one out? What's his name? Marchese? Marchese? Nice. Go red. Go. Kid Poker's got a little bounty envy there. Get him. Of course, in this format, it doesn't matter if elsewhere in the room someone's doing well, since only one player per table advances to the final table, where it all begins again, and it's winner take all. Pocket nines at the feature table for Faraz Jaka, and he's going to raise it up to 550. Jaka, the short stack at this table. Seven tray for Mitzi, and he'll lay it down. To the chip leader here at this table, Joe Gibbons, 10-9 off. And he will not play. Perry Horwich, an amateur player from Massachusetts, he works as a radiologist. He looks out of place here, but where doesn't a radiologist look out of place? He makes the call from the button with ace-deuce of spades, Negrano in the big blind, six-deuce of hearts. No thanks, he says. 
So heads up, Jocka's pair of nines against Horwich's ace deuce suited to flop. Seven, king, ten. Jocka's pocket nines keep their advantage. And he checks. And Horwich checks. Jocka playing his nines cautiously. Turn card now. Six of spades. Jocka's still ahead. Horwich does pick up a flush draw. Jocka bets a measly 200. 200? What is that? 200 into a pot of 1,500? I call. And Horwich does call. River card tray of spades, and Horwich gets there with running spades. He hit his flush. Jocka let him get there with that turn bet. And now 400 from Jocka. Is he going to get off that easy? What's in that pot? 100 million thousand. 100 million thousand? That's a lot of chips. It's getting pot odds. Well, another tiny bet. Or which will raise it up to 2300 Then maybe I only have to show them to the TV. Hmm. Muck it for Oz. Nobody likes to pay off a radiologist. Jocka will make the call, and Barry Horwich shows the flush. The poker pro did not play that well. The radiology pro has his chips. So the amateur will pick up that pod, winning over 6,500 chips, while Jocka is falling further behind everyone at this table. Right down, but never out. Jocka, Jocka, on the prowl. Jocka with a steep hill to climb to make it to the final table. I'm Joanna Krupa, and you're watching the North American Poker Tour. Test your poker skills and even win a free entry to upcoming NAPT events now on PokerStars.net. There are free tournaments every day. And if your game is on, you could be sitting next to me at the next NAPT tournament. Now, let's get back to the action. Back in Mohegan Sun, just in time to see Kurt Kohlberg say his goodbyes. The 51-year-old flopped a set, but lost to Luis Vasquez's flush, becoming the second bounty victim to fall to Vasquez. That started as a five-handed table. They're down to three, including two Canadians, Peter Jetton with almost 34,000 chips, Greg DeBora with over 19,000. If I were Canadian, I wouldn't come here. People are pushy in America. At table one, another Canadian, Pat Pezen, is in good position to collect a bounty with Ace King. He called the pre-flop all-in of Chow Zhang holding a seven. Seven of spades would be a big hit. If Pezen wins, he should tip Matt Glantz half a bounty. I want, I want to go home. Actually, I lost a hand. I don't feel like I play no more. Zhang needs running miracles. Turn card Queen of Diamonds well ended. Chow Zhang, the first knocked off from this table, done in by Pat Pezen. <laughs> I think Chow wants to go home. And he will with no oh, bounties man. and no money. So Pat Pezen, $5,000 richer for that knockout. He's gone almost 28,000 chips. Nine Canadian players around this room, including Van Nguyen, the chip leader over at table four, and Marcello De Grosso, who has more than 26,000 chips at table number three. Back at the feature table, of course, the spiritual leader of all Canadian poker players, Daniel Negrano, and he says there are plenty more good players where he came from understand how if you think poker in Canada you think of my name but I would say that there's a decent number of Canadians who've done well we've got Pat Pezen who plays all the games well he's not just a holding player we have Marcello Del Grasso who's made a few deep runs in the main event we've got Greg Debora he's got the mindset to be a great player and then there's Ann Van Wyn he's the, the quiet assassin you just don't notice him so much and then after a while you're like man that guy just keeps re-raising me what's up with that and every one of them is a threat in a different way. Panda is a force to be reckoned with. we got a bunch of good players. See you at the final table. I have a passion for poker, and so I'd love to help spread the word about poker across Canada. We hope to prove uh, that Canada's not just good at hockey, you know? And I know Canadians are very passionate people, so to have a group of four or five other guys they can root for, there'll be a, a deeper connection. On any given day, any one of these guys can win. Canadians can play poker. Fellows like two-time bracelet winner Greg Mueller, Nanad Medic, Gavin Smith, and Sorrell Mitzi playing right here. Do you still live in Canada? No, I live in Vegas, and uh, I was, I'm from Toronto, Canada. Okay, I've been to Toronto. I w I'm a former Leaf fan, right? Daniel down on his Leafs, but up on the day in chips. As we check the featured table chip count, we see Gibbons leading the way closely, followed by Negreanu. Mitzi under 20,000. Jaka has taken the biggest hit. He sits with 6,000 chips. 
Jaka has to be very careful in this aggressive structure. The blinds up to 200, 400 with a 50 chip ante. Action folds around to Daniel Negreanu, king eight of spades. Canadians are just nicer than us. They make our most polite Minnesotans look like hell's angels. <laughs> Daniel's going to raise it from the button to 1100. Action on Faraz Jaka, ace queen off. And Jaka's all in for his final 6,000 and a quarter. Sorrell Mitzi, Jack Trey, lays down his big block.